We've divided the 12 apostles into two lists, two lists of six. And uh, we uh, spent some time looking at this first list, and the thing about it is that uh, these two here and these two here and these two here are brothers. Or, uh, as it was uh, pointed out, there are some who are now saying uh, that um, Judas was um, uh, either the son of James or the, uh, the son of Alphaeus. And uh, here's what happens. Um, there is one Hebrew word or one uh, Greek word that has to do with the fact that you can be a, a brother, a sister, a son, or what have you. The Catholics come along where it says uh, about um, Jesus' father and, um, and his uh, 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 mother and, and his brothers and his sisters. And they want to teach, of course, the perpetual virginity of Mary. So they say, well, that word can mean his cousins. Now, in context, it's pretty difficult to, to make it mean cousins because it's his father and mother, brothers and sisters. But they all oh, no, no, that's a listing of his cousins. And it, it lists uh, uh, James, which is, was his half-brother who wrote the book of James uh, and, and to whom he appeared after his resurrection. We'll see that uh, tonight. But, um, uh, but the King James people had a reason for translating it, the son, or the, yeah, the son of, making it uh, brothers. But that does pose some difficulty, uh, but um, we, uh, to avoid the confusion, uh, we attempt to stick with uh, what is in the original translation of the King James. Um, see, the, 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 it has done no, uh, who, who can tell how much harm the new translations of the Bible have done. We're not King James only, but we're King James mainly for a reason. You've got to have a standard. If you don't have a standard, then people come along and say, well, this means this, and this means the other, and this means the other. You come along where the whole thrust of a Bible, like the New International Version, is against dispensationalism because they were, it was written by Reformed theologians wanting to make everything the kingdom and the church rather than to rightly divide the scriptures. And it does, it does pose a difficulty. Um, okay, so uh, anyway, these are the, um, the men. Now, we learned something about these men that we'll review. Uh, Simon got a surname called Peter. He also got another name called Cephas. All three are important. Andrew just has the one, and he is termed the brother of Peter. James, whose father was Zebedee, John, whose father was Zebedee, and by the way, uh, the, the same Greek terms that are translated, James uh, and John, the sons of Debedee, uh, uh, Zebedee, is the same Greek term that says James Alphaeus and Judas Alphaeus, same ones. And we know that, uh, that the term, uh, that uh, it says there that they were brothers. So uh, uh, comparing Scripture with Scripture, it probably is safe to say King, the King James people translated that to keep it consistent, uh, and, uh, and it is. Uh, but uh, the, you've got the brothers list. Um, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the sons of Zebedee. We learned that they also have another name, Boanerges, uh, the sons of, of, uh, of thunder. Uh, they, were, they were the ones, remember, who brought their mom there to talk with the Lord and say, could my two boys sit at your right hand and my, your left hand in the coming kingdom? And he said, well, you know, that'd be possible, but it's really not mine to give. You've got to do it the old-fashioned way, earn it. But um, uh, so then you've got uh, James. James Alphaeus and Judas Alphaeus. Then we moved on into the others list. And the others has, has um, six. Simon the Canaanite, Simon the Zealot, and then finally, as we'll see in just a bit, Simon Zelotes. Uh, eight, we looked at Matthew, whose uh, daddy was also an Alphaeus, but he is not claimed to be related to James or Judas. He has another name. In one book, it calls him Matthew without re referring to Levi. The other book, it calls him Levi without referring to Matthew. But it's still the same guy. There's only one who sat at the receipt of custom uh, that was one of the twelve, and that was Matthew. Now we come to Thomas. Now we're going to look that, um, that uh, Thomas as well uh, had a second name. Let's go, go to verse number 24. It says, John chapter 20, verse 24.
And it says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So here we have another guy with, with two names. Um, he can be referred to as Didymus, which, uh, which means the twin. Uh, and so um, uh, Thomas is also referred to in the Bible as the doubter. And uh, as we were going through um, the uh, study there in the first chapter of um, uh, Things That Differ, he is an example of the future uh, uh, generation of, um, of uh, I Israelis who form the remnant. He's, Jesus said, look, Thomas, okay, you didn't see me and you didn't believe, but I appeared to you and you saw. You're blessed because of that. He said, but blessed is the one who doesn't see and yet believe. And so Thomas is going to stand as an example to these future generation of Jews that he, he needs to believe the witness of the other 11. They need to believe the witness of the testimony of Jesus Christ that he was born, he came, they, they saw him, they experienced him, they were friends with him, they saw him resurrected and ascended. Thomas wouldn't believe, but finally because he saw, he believed. The remnant's not going to have the privilege of seeing. So when Jesus said, blessed are those who don't see and yet believe, he is talking to the future generation of, of Jews. So we've got three more guys to go. Let's go to John chapter 1. Verse number 35. The general context is the baptism of Christ. And where John is going to call him the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. And as a matter of fact, probably many of these guys were originally the disciples of John who transferred over to a, be a follower of Jesus Christ at John's request. The next day, John stood two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, uh, uh, which is interpreted master, where do you dwell? Now that is an indication of discipleship. A disciple is one who follows the Lord, is, uh, is around him, who learns from him, who begins to imitate him uh, and to acquire his knowledge and philosophy of things. So he said, come and see. Then uh, they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first find, uh, found his own brother, Simon. You see, that was his real name. He got the term Peter. He got the name Cephas from Christ, subsequent to the name his mom and dad gave him at his birth. Uh, we have found the Messiah, which is uh, called uh, Christ. And uh, when Jesus beheld him coming, verse 42, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is uh, being interpreted a stone. Okay, but now... We said that to bring us to the next two guys. Uh, one is Philip and the other is Bartholomew. Now, in, in each of the, the four lists, uh, three lists that we uh, read, a Bartholomew was there. But we're going to suggest to you that Bar Bartholomew has another name. His name is Nathaniel. Uh, and here's, here's uh, how... It goes. Verse 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth from Galilee, and he found Philip and said, Follow me. And Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And he went and found Nathanael. Now, in each of those lists, the guy is called Bartholomew. Uh, and, and we don't have any record of where Bartholomew was called. But do we have a record of another man called by Christ to become one of the twelve? Yes. And you piece scripture to scripture, Bartholomew has a second name. Uh, his name is Nathanael. Philip found Nathanael. 
and said, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth. Nathanael said, Can there be any good thing that comes out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael, he said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no gal. And so they, uh, they um, uh, talked together, and he said to, uh, to Nathanael, verse number um, 50, last part, Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. All right, so um, undoubtedly this guy uh, by the name of Bartholomew in the list is also uh, found in Scripture to be one called, uh, called Nathaniel. So Andrew found, uh, uh, found Peter, and uh, Philip found Nathaniel or uh, Bartholomew. And just to, to show you that, let's go back to um, Matthew chapter 10 just for a quick um, reference here. Matthew chapter 10. Where it says in verse number 3. And these two guys are, are usually always listed together uh, in the order of the twelve. Philip and Bartholomew. All right. The last fellow in the list, of course, is Judas Iscariot. Each time his uh, name comes up in the order, it's always last, and uh, his last name is, is always listed, and it's always said of him, he is the traitor, uh, each time. Well, as a matter of fact, we can, we can look here, verse 4. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, last on the list, who also betrayed him. In other places he's called the traitor. Uh, similar wording means he is the one who gave Christ over into the hand of his enemies. Now you have to remember that this is not just a spiritual thing, this is a political thing. And that the high priest and, uh, and the Sanhedrin wanted control of Israel, and they knew that if they believed in Jesus, they'd have to give it over to him. So Judas Iscariot betrayed, it was treasonous to give Christ, the leader of the new kingdom, over to the old leaders who wanted to simply destroy him. Uh, all right, now let's go to Acts chapter 1 for the fourth listing and see a change. Acts chapter 1, and we'll begin reading verse number 13. And when they were coming to the upper room, there abode Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of uh, uh, Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, there it fi they finally connected the two names together, Judas the, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication uh, with uh, uh, Mary and his brethren. In those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. The number of names were about 120. And so he said, men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Christ. For he was numbered with us, he obtained part of this ministry. In other words, he was one of the twelve. Now hold your place here and go to John 6. John 6. And it says in verse number 66, and I want you to, to note this, because I haven't studied it out yet, but I, but I may come to, um, it, it's, a, it's a same conclusion, but it's a somewhat um, a different light on Judas Iscariot in, in the light of our um, switch in theology that an Old Testament saint could lose his salvation. All right. I believe that Judas is an example of one who at first believed, but backed off. 
at first trusted and backed off. Now, our conclusion is that he finally disbelieved and therefore went to hell. Why did Judas Iscariot go to hell? He disbelieved in Jesus Christ. But at first, he believed. And that could be an explanation of why Christ chose him. But once he chose him, Judas had a change of heart and therefore became a traitor, uh, you know, uh, uh, a traitor in the woodpile, as it were. And note the context here, verse uh, 66. Uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Uh, they turned their back on Jesus Christ. All of the, from the group uh, of the disciples, the disciple pool, as it were, which there were, there were lots. Jesus was beginning to put um, uh, the, the screws, as it were, down on, put the pressure on him. It's going to take a lot to be my disciple. And so they turned around and said, well, enough's enough. I'm, he, he's demanding too much of me. So note what Jesus said in verse 67. Jesus said to the twelve, will ye go away too? Are you going to turn your back on me? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure you're the son of the living God. Jesus answered, have not I chosen you twelve? In other words, you started out with me, but one of you has turned your back on me. And one of you is, is now has become a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was um, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, again, we'll study that the, through, but uh, the book of Hebrews seems to, to say that if you start off in light of the kingdom, turn around and go back. Uh, then, uh, then it's going to be worse with you because you're going to lose your salvation. Cursed is the man that continues not in all things written in the book of the law to do them. And one of those things was to believe on Christ. Okay, let's go back then to, to Acts chapter 1 and verse number 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, let his bishopric, which uh, uh, is a, an old English word for his office. The office that's spoken of is the office of being one of the twelve, his apostleship. Let another take. So we've got 12 apostles. Now we've got 11 apostles that are named up here in verse number 13. Now we need one more. Now, if you were, um, were a good, um, good Baptist, <laughs> you would say, it's going to be what guy? Paul. Paul was the 12th apostle. And of course, that's not true. As a matter of fact, he did not have the qualifications to be an apostle one of the twelve. He did not have the qualifications. Therefore they prayed, Wherefore are these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? And they appointed two. Now there were 120 mentioned here in verse number 15. Out of 120, there were evidently only two that were qualified with those qualifications. Baptism of John to the ascension. Paul was not saved until a year and a half after uh, the, these things happened. He couldn't have had the qualifications. But two did. They appointed two, one Joseph called Barsabas, who uh, probably is the Barnabas of the book of Acts, uh, and who was surnamed Justus, and, and here you go again. It's Barnabas, uh, it's Barsabas, who is Barnabas, who is Justus. Doesn't do us any justice, I'll tell you. And the second guy was Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, you know the hearts of these men, which you have chosen. Now, get it? You had to be personally chosen of Christ, and you had to be with him uh, in, in these parameters. You had to stick with him. The guy who didn't stick with him was Judas, and he fell. But here are two guys who stuck with him to this point and didn't turn their back on him. Uh, and uh, so, 
uh, they gave forth the lots, which was a bona fide Old Testament way of, of a, uh, discerning God's uh, will. The lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the apostles. And so, that's what we're going to do right here. Matthias replaced Judas Iscariot. So now, if you'll turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And we'll start reading with verse number 12. And the question we ask then is, whose names are going to be listed on the New Jerusalem? Verse number 12, Revelation 21. And the New Jerusalem had a wall great and high, and it had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So, this city has the twelve tribes there, and who sat at the gates but judges? And Peter said, we've forsaken all. What are we going to get there for? And Jesus said, you're going to get 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Where did judges sit in a city? At the gate. That's where they sat. And they judged at the gate. So it says, on the east there were three gates, the north there were three gates, the south there were three gates, the west there were three gates. The uh, wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Who are they? Simon, Peter Cephas, Andrew, his brother, James Zebedee, Boanerges, John Zebedee, Boanerges, James Alphaeus, uh, Judas Alphaeus, who is also called Labaius and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, who eventually got Simon Zelotes, Matthew, who is also called Levi. Thomas, who is also called Didymus. Philip, thank God for a regular guy. And Bartholomew, who is also called Nathaniel. Judas Iscariot was one of them, but he fell from his place. And Matthias now replaced uh, Judas. So... If you in the New Jerusalem, if you want to impress people again, as we said, you'll be able to tell the, the 12 apostles with the brothers list and the others list. But uh, I just uh, focus on the main uh, names here. OK, now let's uh, let's move on. Uh, and uh, let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Gospel of John, chapter 13. Now, the disciples and the apostles, what are they? Well, let's look at a disciple first, all right? Disciple comes from the Greek word methetes. And methetes, by the way, is something that's, that is attributed to a grace believer. The principle of discipleship is the same for both groups. However, kingdom disciples didn't make grace disciples, and grace disciples don't make kingdom disciples. We are not, as some churches call themselves, the disciples of Christ. Uh, they go right back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they try to duplicate what the disciples under that economy did, and they call themselves the disciples of Christ. Of course, they can't do it. That was written under law. Uh, it's an impossibility, but they sure are going to uh, strain to try to do it. But basically, any disciple... And John had his disciples. Uh, false teachers had their disciples, said Paul uh, in, in Matthew or in Acts chapter 20. He said, there are going to be those that rise to try to draw away disciples after themselves. But a disciple mainly is a student or a follower of a teacher and his teachings. 
It just so happens that the teacher in this case is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the emphasis is on an inner transformation, an inner attitude. The emphasis is on learning to become like. That's what a disciple is. You learn, 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 learn. And uh, eventually the very philosophy and mindset and inner essence of the teacher is, uh, uh, is acquired by you. So verse number uh, 12 in John 13. So after he washed their feet and had uh, taken his garments and was set down again, he said to them, know ye what I have done now. By the way, you, we, we've discussed this uh, before, but do you know what the foot washing is all about? The foot washing is all about Jesus Christ making his disciples apostles. Let's, let's just put an apostle there. Apostolos is the Greek. One sent away. It is, it is a, a word that has authorization to it. One who is sent by an authority to be an envoy uh, on his behalf with legal representation. Um, let's hold our place here. Hold our place here and go to the book of, of Romans. Chapter 10. But that's what the foot washing is, is uh, really all about. It is about making a disciple an apostle. Because you can be somebody's disciple, but if you are not trustworthy, if you are not accountable, if you're not responsible, apostleship can be withheld. And what Jesus Christ is doing is going to show them that um, if they're a disciple, now that they're going to take what they've learned and do what? Share it with others outwardly. That's what the Great Commission for Israel is all about. But they're washed from head to ankles. <laughs> and in order for them to go forth with the message, they've got to have their feet washed. And that's, that's what an apostle is, one with, who's a disciple who's got his feet washed by the Lord. Verse 14, uh, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How they, shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? Apostolos, sent away with a message, a representative acting on behalf of the one who sent them. And so it says, uh, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. That's what the foot washing is all about. And of course, there, there'll be those who would be the disciples of Christ. I'll tell you what, if it took being saved to have one of you wash my feet, I would be headed down the road to, to, uh, to hell, I'm afraid. No, not so. And not only that, I ain't going to wash yours either. <laughs> Uh, not going to do it. Um, and, that, and, it, and that had nothing whatsoever to do with anything back there except one thing. The king is about ready to ascend. And in his absence, he's going to send forth apostles with the message of the kingdom. And they're washed from head to toe, but they needed one more thing washed, their feet. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what he said. Uh, let's go back to ver verse um, um, 3 here. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to his hand, when he knew this, he arose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself. After that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with a the towel where he was girded. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said, what I do now, you don't know, but you'll know hereafter. You, in other words, you'll get the picture just a little bit, uh, Peter. What uh, I've given you the keys to the kingdom, and you're all set down to your ankles, but your feet are still dirty, and uh, you can't go out as an apostle without being washed. Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus says. If I wash thee not, you've got no part with me. You're not going to be my, my apostle. And not only that, you're, you're backtracking on discipleship, because the next natural step in discipleship is what? Apostleship. 
If you're going to be his disciple, you want to share the truths of your master with somebody else, and that's apostleship. All right. Uh, Jesus said to him, He that is washed need not uh, 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 save to wash, but his feet. He is clean every whit. You're clean, but not all, for you should betray him. Therefore he said, You're not all clean. So after he washed their feet, he had uh, taken his garments and said, Know ye uh, what I have done to you. You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I, uh, so I am. Uh, Rabboni, uh, Father, uh, Teacher, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the one exalted, my, uh, uh, our leader, uh, and the like. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. In other words, uh, uh, keep, keep the collective group clean as you're going out as apostles. I've given you an example that ye should do as I've done. The servant is not greater than his Lord, and neither he that is sent, and that's the point, greater than he that sent him. You're a disciple, Master and Lord. Now, you're sent, and I'm the one that's going to send you. Okay? Uh, now, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, being sent is what an apostle does. It is an emphasis on others. Discipleship is emphasis on oneself, being like the Lord. Apostleship is emphasis on, on others. Let's go to um, Matthew 7 for discipleship. Matthew 7. These verses were aptly referred to uh, this morning in our opening session. Verse number, verse number 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. Now, to be a disciple, you much, must actually transform yourself uh, into the, the, uh, or, uh, the image of what the teacher is teaching. That's why Christ said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, here are disciples, but they're false Disciples, But he that does the will of my Father, he that does what I teach. My words are the words of my Father I'm given to you. Learn them, live by them. Many will say, Lord, Lord, we have done this, that, and the other uh, uh, in your name. But he said, I never knew you. You were a disciple in name only. But he said, therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, that's a disciple. He is a follower of the, of the teacher and he has allowed the teachings to uh, permeate his um, inner being. I liken him to a wise man which built his house on the rock and the rain descended and, and so forth. Uh, but the others that don't listen are likened to a foolish man. Last part of verse 20, 26, the rains descended and the house fell. Now, the people were astonished at his doctrine, and here's the key. We know that this is the area of discipleship because he taught them as one having authority. He said, if, if I'm your master, and I am, this is what I say, and, and that's the way it, it generally should be. And so it's an emphasis on oneself. However, let's go to Luke 9. Luke 9. And, and I want you to, to note the wording here of how we go from discipleship to apostleship. From ones who have learned their lesson that he's taught, a disciple, to those who are going to go out and teach others about what they've learned, an apostle. Then he called, it says, his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over devils to cure uh, diseases. 
Now, that's, we're moving from discipleship to apostleship. The one in authority delegated authority to others. That's apostleship. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Apostleship. We've moved into, from one realm into uh, the other. And it says, uh, verse number six, and they departed, which is apostleship, and went through the towns preaching uh, the, the gospel. Now come back to, come down to verse number 10. Now know what it, the verse calls them. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that they had done. So, are the 12 disciples or apostles? Yes. <laughs> They're both. What do you mean? Well, you have to be a disciple before you can be an apostle. And you have to be qualified by the one in authority and sent forth as an apostle. And so in both cases, you have him saying to the 12 uh, disciples, I'm sending you forth, and they became apostles. Both are true, but it just depends on the context. When it refers to disciples, it's referring to those who have sat at his feet and learned. When it's referring to them being apostles, it's those who are now qualified to take it out to others, the kingdom message, and share it that they might uh, uh, be saved. Let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. And verse 18. Now, this, this is taken uh, now, as a matter of fact, um, let, let's go back to, to verse number uh, 16 in, in, this, um, in this regard and get the context. This is one of the appearances of Christ during the 38 interim days between the first day, his resurrection day, and the 40th day when, when he ascended. Then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had uh, appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Some doubted. Now, again, you, you, you've got various accounts here, and you, it takes some time to wade through and put them against history. But Jesus came, in verse 18, he came to the disciples, and note what he said. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That shows that he now had a universal authority from God the Father. God the, the, the Father said, okay, look, you know, you're, you're, I'm going to have you to sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In light of that, he makes these disciples apostles. Go ye therefore, apostello, one who is sent away. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things what I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age, not world, but the end of the age, meaning the dispensation of grace. Uh, one more, one more uh, verse uh, here is Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And verse number four. So you have the 12 with a group of disciples waiting here in the upper room. And Jesus says, okay, you 12, you're going to be the leaders. And that's why I was, um, I, I don't know if I elaborated a little too much on the various points, because I was going to make this a two-parter, but I got a whole lot of stuff here to discuss. I don't know what to do with it unless we talk about it tonight um, and keep it in context. But anyway, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart out of Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of his Father. This was the twelve plus uh, the others in that group of 120. John baptized with water, ye baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. 
Lord, are you going to restore again the kingdom of Israel? Verse 6, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. Uh, we're, we're going to work at it. But um, I, I don't know how it's, you know, we're not going to tell how it's going to be played out. But I do know this. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses unto me. Now note that as disciples, he now is going to send them forth. Starting in Jerusalem, then all Judea, then in Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. The Spirit of God is going to come upon them, and they are going to go first to Jerusalem, then uh, they're going to increase that to Judea, then to Samaria, then from that point the uttermost parts of the earth, in fulfilling the Great Commission to bring the world to the feet of uh, Messiah. Okay? So, um, let's, um, we, we've only got a, a few minutes here. I'll tell you what, uh, what I think we'll do is just to simply uh, open it up for, for any questions that you might have. It's really not a study where uh, any deep spiritual commitment is demanded on your part. <laughs> but anybody like to take a stab at naming the twelve? Okay. Um, there was that time from Peter, and Andrew was the brother of Peter. There was uh, James Zebedee, who was the brother of John Zebedee. There was Thaddeus, um, um, who was the brother of John Zebedee. Judas, Alphaeus, Alphaeus. But Judas, Alphaeus, was Thaddeus and Labaeus. Oh. But he was the brother of James Alphaeus. Okay. Anybody like to try the last six? Just because we don't want to run out of time here. Come on. Simon, the other Simon. Simon Peter and Simon Salotes. Uh, the guy who's had a receipt of customs, the guy who is also called Didymus, the regular guy, it was Philip, uh, who, who, he was the guy who went and got Bartholomew, who's also Nathaniel, and then Jesus chose Judas Iscariot. Okay. Oh, very good, Jackie. Excellent. Yes, yes. <laughs> very good. All right. Well, yes. <laughs> okay, but but see it here's what it's talking about. Everything, everything that, uh, that happened here happened in those 483 years of, of Daniel's prophecy. Remember? Um, and there's the cross, and it said after the cross, after the 483 years, that there would be seven years out here with a gap in between. And when they said, will you at this time restore the kingdom? He said, okay, uh, I'm not going to tell you why. Because a year, he, from the cross of Calvary, he gave Israel how, how much time? A one-year grace period. And this is where Stephen is. Uh, and, and so therefore, uh, what, what he's talking about is not, are you, going to, uh, are you going to bring the kingdom in now? What did Peter preach just a short time later? If you'll repent, God will send for the times of restitution. Will you at this time? He said, I'm not going to tell you. You just do what you're told and we'll see how it plays out. But it had nothing to do with predicting uh, uh, the end, except uh, that if they had repented, they would have waived going through the tribulation. Okay. Well, they didn't because the kingdom, you had to start in Jerusalem. If the leaders of Jerusalem didn't accept, then, then no one else was going to accept. Right, but that was a whole different ball game. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Right. But they were, um, and that's something else. I, I, I think that the, that's that's what we'll do. Uh, there, I'll just put D and and A over here. Uh, there is a primary sense where you can be the disciple or of the twelve or one of the apostles, and there's a secondary sense where you can be a disciple or an apostle. And so you have to make that distinction. Only the 12 were the d disciples, the apostles. But the rest of them were also disciples who were called out under the Great Commission to be an apostle. So you have to take the primary and secondary sense of the word.